Welcome back. You're watching Stockwatch this week and join me to unpack your stock related questions. This afternoon is Devon Shoot from the Robay Group. Be sure to send your questions via email to stockwatch at bdtv.co.za or via SMS on 41392 or on X at Business Day TV using the hashtag Stockwatch. Thank you so much for your time, Devon. Of course, uh, US earnings are heating up. We did see um, sometime uh, during the week uh, the markets disappointed by the first uh, mega cap uh, earnings that uh, came out. But do you think that um, the sentiment was r largely ruled by uh, those earnings or are markets still largely ruled by anticipation for what the Fed could do? Look, it's hard to say, Zanati. I think mm -hmm. I have a bit of both. Um, I think if you look at the, the earnings side of things, what, what you've got to remember is that these, these large cap tech players that have been um, taking our market higher for so long, and you know investors can really be um, grateful for that, we're, we're priced for perfection. And although yeah. the, the earnings coming through generally have been pretty, pretty reasonable, I don't think they've quite hit the high notes um, that you, you know those valuations dictated. And so as a result, you're, you're seeing that kind of pull back to reality, gravity kicking in there and, and, and normalization. So, you know, if you had to look at something like the alphabet numbers, um, yeah, a really solid set of results. Maybe the, the weak spot was the advertising revenues yeah. on YouTube, yeah. which, which was still good, but, but just, just missed some very lofty expectations. And I think that's the theme that's starting to come through. Um, on the second part of it that you mentioned on, on interest rates, yeah, that, that's a theme that's not going away, <laughs> not going to go away, I should say, any anytime soon. I think if we look at, you know, what's what's happening, we're getting the PCE print uh, today, which will be very interesting. That's the Fed's preferred um, inflation indicator. But I think we're seeing a, a clearer trend emerging that um, inflation is coming down in the U.S. U.S. obviously key because everyone's watching the Fed there. And I think increasingly likely that, that they are going to be in a position to start cutting uh, mm -hmm. markets pricing in September. And then for us, yeah, hope, hopefully the same there. So, yeah, yeah, yeah let's go on this week. Um, yeah, quite a lot going on. And actually, um, particularly in the resources uh, sector, because uh, this week we had the platinum miners actually up uh, for most of the week, if not all of the week, those uh, gains being led by Anglo-American platinum. Of course, they did release uh, their earnings on Monday. And even today, you have Tingela uh, leading the gains there on the JSC. Is there a sense of a bottoming out in these um, commodities that have been beaten down really, really badly? Yeah, look, I'm not brave enough to call a bottom <laughs> in single commodity producers and particularly platinum. Yeah. But I think to, to, to your question, we, we, you know, investors, they have really taken a lot of pain in, the, uh, pain in these platinum stocks. Yeah. I mean, they've been battered for a couple of years now. And yeah. it does seem that they that they're starting to attract some some buying interest. So you know, being as cyclical as they are and, and geared to that underlying metal play, I think when we start to see the supply tightness come back into into platinum, which we're starting to see the first signs of it, probably not fully there yet. I, I think mm -hmm. you know you could blink and and these counters could be up significantly. So. Yeah, I, I think my answer is is maybe, but we're going to be watching it very closely. What about coal? Because uh, Tungela, considering all the news uh, that was surrounding uh, Tungela and the excitement a couple of years ago, it kind of has been uh, muted. But of course, yesterday coming in being the star of the show today, uh, could there be more optimism uh, for the coal miner and the coal market at this point? As an IT, I think yes, and, and I think the reason purely is because the, the, the coal market, uh, as along with many commodities, is just chronically undersupplied at the moment. Yeah. And, and although you know we're we're, we're looking at, at transitioning to renewables globally, the reality is that the the, the base load that, that coal supplies is, is is just needed at the moment. Mm. Um, you know, an Anglo spun out Tungela and allowed investors to to choose or to not. And if you were there for the for the listing of it. You've done handsomely and really benefited from those massive dividend yields that it, that it paid out for those those initial investors. So yeah, I think also there's a there's a few things in energy supply at the moment we've got to we've got to consider. I think one that is maybe under appreciated is the power drain that um, generative AI 
has yeah. on on you know power supply and i, and I think mm. that is only going to grow exponentially and still finding the balance between renewables and fossil fuels and yeah, as, as a result, I, I think that coal stands to benefit in the short to medium term. Mm, all right. Well, sticking to commodities, because there is a viewer that has been waiting for you uh, to come on. Um, and it goes, please ask Devin if uh, he would still recommend Antofagasta, copper miner in Chile, as a buy for the medium to long term. I am currently up 50, uh, about 50% on my position, but keen to add to it as there has been a drop in the last two months. FYI, it has outperformed all the other copper plays discussed by analysts on this channel. So, seeing there that you made a good bet, uh, Devin and the viewer wants to know, uh, because they've also made a quite seen the returns on that decision, should and could they add on it at this point? Yeah, I mean, look, timing these commodity <laughs> plays, as we've been discussing, is, is incredibly difficult. I mean, yeah. looking at Antifocus, it, it is one um, we like with those uh, South American copper assets. We, we just think, you know, we, we spoke about tightness of supply and coal now, and, and copper even more so, uh, you know, feeding into the, the whole electronic vehicle and other renewable space. It's just such a sought-after commodity. It was the main driver for Billiton going after Anglo-American, and I, I think the, the quality of the assets, of which Antifagasta sits on some fantastic quality assets, will stand them in good stead. So, yeah, it, it is a bumpy ride. It's had a terrific run. Um, I mean, and, and I think my, my sense definitely it's a, it's a hold for the, the viewer that's in it. Mm -hmm. Would I add? Yeah, I probably would. I, th I think there's enough in it from the, you, you know, from the um, tightness of supply to, mm. to really keep an underpin on the prices of copper. And, and I think they're particularly well positioned. Is that the only copper counter that you'd be looking at right now, considering, uh, you know, the number of copper players out there? Yeah, I, I mean, it's our preferred one. You know, okay. as I said, Anglo-American does does give you um, some some access there as well. Generally, we, 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 we try not to go to, for single commodity producers just because of that volatility and cyclicality that we, that we spoke about, but, mm. but yeah, in, in this case, we, we, we seem to think this is compelling and in a particularly sweet spot. Ah, all right. I think the last of the commodity uh, questions. Uh, Sibanye, is it a good buy at these levels? Um, I, I think I would first first look at, before looking at the price, look at the, the business itself. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's really, really come through a tough time, unfortunately, after being a darling for for so long and transitioning the portfolio away from, from purely gold. Um, as I said, I'm cautiously optimistic that we're going to see platinum recover, but but I, I still think Sabanya, particularly with the balance sheet and that type of thing, has mm -hmm. still got a way to go. So I'm not bottom picking on it yet. I, I think it probably will give investors an opportunity, but it is still fairly high risk at this stage, in my opinion. Uh, all right. Well, I mean, uh, you spoke about the power drain uh, that a generative AI uh, <laughs> does have on the electricity system. I actually want to zoom in on that because, uh, well, not the power drain, but the uh, AI part of it. Because OpenAI actually announced that they are uh, creating a new search engine called Search GPT. And we actually did see the shares of Alphabet uh, sliding. Earlier on, you spoke about, uh, you know, the earnings and also the, the disappointment that investors did have on YouTube uh, advertising there. But just looking at the fact that, um, you know, the success of ChatGPT and now looking at the creation of a search GPT that uh, would be a rival for Google, do you think that Alphabet stands uh, to lose something there? It, it, it's very possible. I mean, I, I, th I think what the massive um, com compelling reason for generative AI and these large language models is that it gives the ability for the average person to engage with technology using speech, using words, using chat, whereas previously, you know, you had to had to be coding it. So I, I think it makes tech a lot more accessible. And I think this this latest move from open AI is just a further step in that. Um, one, one thing I will say about AI, though, is, is that investors need, need to look very carefully at, at how the productivity and, and the returns from AI being implemented in these businesses is actually mm. uh, generated. You know, the, the, it's massively expensive tech to, to run. Um, and I don't think we're quite getting the productivity gains yet yeah. um, that, that these companies need. So, 
Yeah, I, I, I think you've got the, the big tech companies that, that we all know um, in, in this kind of land grab for um, these graphics processing units. And, and I think how it plays out and how it plays out and how it integrates into everyday life is, is, is still a, a big unknown. And I, and I think, you know, developments like this will start to bring us closer. And, you, you know, the more integrated it gets into daily life, which it sounds like this latest development yeah. will do, I, I think that will spell success for them. All right. Well, let's go into financial services. There's an interesting question here. With future decreasing interest rates, uh, do you think uh, the uh, old mutual and Alex Forbes could be a buy? Because um, we're always talking about the banks, but actually, yes. I, I don't know about the yeah insurers, uh, retirement player. I, yeah. I th yeah, Zanati, I think it would be one factor. I, I mean, I think what, what you do as, as you kind of loosen monetary policy by cutting interest rates, you, you, you create more spending power for the average consumer. Mm -hmm. That's great. That, that will benefit insurers. But I think where insurers will possibly benefit more is remember they're sitting on massive piles of capital from yeah. premiums that, that they collect that they're investing into the market. So oftentimes these companies are really just mm -hmm. geared uh, financial market plays and you know if we see rates coming down if we see economic reform and, and growth take up in South Africa I think those are going to be massive catalysts for those insurers that that, that you've mentioned so mm. yeah I think the banks ran first they kind of at the sharp end of the economy I think the insurers potentially as well as the retailers follow close behind ah, all right well let's go into uh, fintech um, analyst take on capital appreciation yeah, I mean, it's it's one we, we've, we've spoken about before. Mm -hmm. I think um, what I've always enjoyed is the um, annuity revenue that they, they've really started moving to. I, I think that that does look quite attractive there. Um, you know, these are always highly competitive businesses. And I think that, you know, as, as a result, you have to be somewhat circumspect when, when investing in them. But this is a little business that really hasn't put a foot wrong, um, continues to, to grow. Um, management team that um, we, we rate. So, yeah, yeah, we, th we think it's interesting. Yeah. Well, here's another one, and I hope I'm not throwing a curveball at you because not a lot of analysts actually look at this one. I know Alex Days does. Mustic. Um, is this one that you look at that is on your radar at any point? Um, the uh, viewer is asking, uh, what's propelled Mustic? Um, it was up uh, earlier on in the week, 30% uh, in three days. Sure. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I don't follow it that closely. Yeah. Um, but I think what, what you've got is a, a technology hardware business. Mm -hmm. um, tough business because, you know, you're really looking at, at, at volumes and, you know, getting your supplier agreements right and, and that type of thing. And as a result, your, your margins, mm -hmm. you, you don't always have as, as much pricing power in them as you would like. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I mean, I, th I think with this kind of underlying technology spend and um, you know, this reinvestment cycle we're seeing with AI and, and that type of thing. I think a company like Mustek will stand to benefit. Okay, I think yeah. also those economic tailwinds from uh, domestic reform will, will help as well if that plays out. So, so yeah, in, interesting play, but, but yeah, not, I want to follow overly closely. Ah, all right. Another one, CA Sales. Um, I know, obviously, it was uh, uh, unbundled from uh, PSG. Um, merits of an investment on a long-term basis uh, in CA sales? Uh, yeah, so that's you know, not one I really yeah. follow um, that, that closely. I think I'm probably going to take a pass on that one. Ah. Apologies to the viewer. <laughs> ah, all right. Well, uh, Devon, let us get to your stock pick uh, for today. What will it be? Yeah, so so this is, this is one that has been um, quite topical at at the moment, it's the iShares Russell 2000 ETF, mm -hmm. uh, code IWN. Uh, We've we hold, been holding this for clients in our global equity fund for quite some time. And really, it's an ETF that tracks 2,000 of the smaller cap U.S. equities. But, you know, that comes with a caveat is that a small cap U.S. equity can be, you know, close to a trillion rand in value. So it's not not micro caps by, by any means. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's exposed to sectors that haven't been in vogue for a long time, sectors like financials, healthcare, industrials. Mm -hmm. And the, why I'm recommending it, it has really lagged the S&P and NASDAQ for a long time now because of those large cap tech um, names mm -hmm. that, that have, have really led it. 
And, you know, at the moment, in the last month, we're seeing an incredible reversal on that. We, we've got in the last month, this, this index is up about 10%, and NASDAQ is, is negative. And so we're really watching this closely to see if the market, which has been so narrow and focused in those big companies, is starting to broaden out. If it is, we think this is a fantastic place um, to be positioned. And we think it's got some really good diversification benefits for investor portfolios. Before I let you go, uh, Devin, just to sneak in a, a quick one. Finn Bond, yes. uh, you spoke about it uh, off air and uh, you said that you haven't looked at it uh, for a long time. Uh, yeah, would you say that it, it is a good buy, but also because you haven't looked at it in a long time, would you be in a position to say it is a good buy at this point? <laughs> Recording uh, look, stopped. Look. Oh, uh, what, what I know about um, companies like this is that um, they, they really are dependent on, on the health of the consumer. Um, that comes into, again, the economic growth, the level of interest rates, the indebtedness mm. of households. So, so likely they've, they've gone through probably the toughest time that, that you can expect um, in, in terms of non-performing loans and the like. I, I think there is a potential opportunity, but I would caveat that with the yeah. strong health warning that <laughs> yeah, the, the things aren't guaranteed here and, and there's, there's still a lot of risk. Ah, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time and giving us analysis uh, on those questions and some of the news that we did have during the week. Uh, Devin, uh, that was Devin Shute from the Rebay Group.